So first thing, I was talking about Sean Payton. Like, it's obviously devolved into a situation where they can't – I mean, they're just running through coordinators. Defensively, they can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a mess. The drafting hasn't been ideal. Like, is, it, is there a reason why most of us would suggest he's absolutely safe? Yeah. Like, yeah I think he's safe. He's, he's yes. Got, he's got Drew, got Drew Brees. And so he's safe. There's All, no – Always going to be safe. You, gotta, if, you what, got Drew Brees, you're going to be safe. But, but even if they go 7-9, and nine, is it – how does the ownership see him? I think if you look at him, there he's got, what is it, Drew Brees, since he's been in the league or since he's been playing for the Saints, their top five, top six offense in the NFL, uh, defensively is where they struggle. When they won that Super Bowl, it was because of that defense. It that, was. That, 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 that's why they won that. Uh, but I think from an ownership standpoint, you got a guy that your Hall of Fame quarterback loves. I think they have a pretty good relationship from what I hear. Uh, I just, I, I, I going forward, I mean, you can't get you. Can, it's hard to get rid of a guy like that the, who, the, who they have that relationship with, who's still you know, packing the stadium. When you go there, that place is nuts. They're uh, they're they're still selling out. And it's really a losing franchise. And Sean gave them their rainbow. Yep. He gave them their Super Bowl. So I think there's always that the ownership. You know, you could say what you want, but Tom Coughlin's last four or five years. You know, he gave the Mara family Super Bowls. That gives an ownership group a lot of patience. Yes, it they does. got a lot of patience with Sean Payton. So I was talking about things I learned in week one, and I, you know, Matt Stafford's worth the money. Oh, good God, Andrew Luck really is valuable. Jared Goff now has workable parts. Dak looks like the real deal. Marvin Lewis, Andy Dalton may be coming to a close. Uh -oh. Was there something week one you looked at and went, wow, this is for real? Uh, Alex Smith. Alex Smith and, and, and the Kansas City Chiefs. To go in there and do what they did in New England, uh, that fourth quarter that they had, and the way Alex Smith played, who knew he was a Hall of Fame quarterback? Right. You know, the way he played, it was the game of his life. Uh, I did not see that coming. Uh, Hunt, their, their running back, is, is great. And staying in the AFC, I think Marshawn Lynch, beast mode, is in o uh, uh, Oakland. Well, Vegas, or we call it Oakland. Yeah. Uh, the way he ran the ball, I didn't – think anybody could take a year off and come back and do what he did. He actually looks better he did. than when he left. He looked, he looked energized. Look, looked slimmer, too. Like, like look, looked like he had some, some energy. It's just a great situation. I think he loves being at home in Oakland. Uh, it's very, very surprising. I mean, the, the way he came out and played. You know, it's interesting. I always had this theory about the NFL that bad teams, I will occasionally in September on my football picks, I'll take bad teams early. Because I believe locker rooms are full of mostly optimistic guys. You were known as one of those guys. Uh -huh. You're a seller. You're, you're preaching the gospel of the staff. You're an optimistic guy. But there's about 10% of guys in the locker room that are cynical, and uh -huh. they jump off really quickly. Uh -huh. Go back to your NFL career. How Do you have to go 0-2, 0-3, 0-4? Before guys start jumping off. <laughs> well, uh, for me, personally, just me, I I'm an optimistic person. You know, I always believe we got a chance. There's always a chance. Right. Uh, till, till they say it, it, it's no more. Uh, but, yeah, you get those guys in that locker room that will jump ship right away, and those are the guys you have to go up to and say, nah, uh you can't, you can't do this. And that's where good leadership comes in and good coaching because it is miserable. My last year, year 17, we, we, we knew the season was over right away. How, it, well, like when? Like after week seven, eight, you, you have that losing record, and then you hear all the, the stats that say, you know what, you, you guys only have a 2% a, a chance of making the playoffs. You don't, you don't have a pass rusher. Your left tackle's hurt. Yes. So you drive to the facility knowing we're done. But now you're playing, at least for me, you, you, you start playing that mind game with yourself. Okay, what am I playing for? And for me, it was year 17. So it's like, you know what, it's my, it's my last year in the league. I'm going to go out playing. I got to go out showing. I can't leave anything bad on tape because this is my legacy. Now, when I was younger and I played on those teams, it was, hey, this is, I'm trying to prove myself and I can't leave anything bad on tape. I have to go out there and make it, make it work. And going back to your question before, something just popped in my mind. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, too. I'm, I'm surprised. Them. I think that defense is, we, we, we've, we've counted them out. They're finally coming around. All those first round draft yeah, But you can't win with, I mean, here's the thing. They, it's like I watch Jacksonville, mm -hmm. but I also know their coaches sent us a message, and their coaches told us we're, we don't trust our offense. We're just going to run the football. Yeah. Which is fine. What's wrong with that? You can run the football. Like Seattle runs the football. 
but I get Russell Wilson. I get really high-end capable. I think a lot of teams in week one, like I said before, New England lost, they're still good. Jacksonville won. They're so limited at quarterback. So limited. He, he's a turnover machine. Don't let him throw the ball. And I think that's going to be their recipe for success. They're going to play great defense. And right now, I'll say it on your show, I think they're the best the best defense in the league. Second, second best defense right there. Top two defenses in the league before. If they stay healthy, I think this year it's going to be a – that's that team that's going to come out of nowhere this year and, 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 and shock people. Uh, and Fournette on offense, just give them the ball. And that's what Tom Coughlin wants to do. He wants to ground and pound and play great defense. Do not let Blake Bortles throw the ball that much because he's a turnover machine. Uh, and he only throws for big yards in the fourth quarter. But if you can get him conservative and run that football, first and second down, third short safe throws on third down to pick up the first down, this team could, could win some games this year. You know, I was, we were talking about this, um, and we're going to talk about it later, Cam Newton. So I was sitting with Michael Vick yesterday, and Michael Vick's like, listen, you just got to let Cam run. You can't tell Cam not to run. <laughs> it, that, that, that's who he is. To me, I look at Cam Newton as a home run hitter who's going to strike out a lot. He's not a double hitter. He's not the late Tony Gwynn. He's not Wade Boggs. Um, it's not Phil Simms. That's not what you're getting. What you're getting is a home run hitter. And I believe it's been established. He's going to complete about 58% of his throws. Mm-hmm. He's going to take the top off your defense two to three times a game because he can. he's got a howitzer. But in the end, when you look at Cam Newton and you played against Cam Newton, okay, you were in those film rooms. Have we elevated Cam to beyond what he's capable of, that he is just a low-percentage, non-precision home run hitter? There's nothing wrong with that. Well, There's nothing wrong with that. That's wh- what he is. What are your expectations for him, though, Colin? I mean, 58% completions, yes. 20, 22 touchdown passes, 11 picks. I, that's I, what he is. That, that, and that's what he is. But what, that, what I told you yesterday, like the, the secret sauce with Cam and what makes him that MVP of the league uh, is is his legs. It's yes. running with the football. Yes. Hit six yards rushing on the first game of the season. You take away Cam, you take away Cam's legs, and, and you stop calling the place for him to run the football, you have an average quarterback. There's no question. Sitting in the pocket, he is an average quarterback. But you let him run the football and you and you keep him who he is, it, that's when he's at that MVP level. And we talk about uh, Michael Jordan later in his career, that turnaround fadeaway jumper. He did that. He perfected that. Because I agree, you have to always keep trying to get better. But still, Michael Jordan would, would fake that turnaround jumper and then dribble the ball and still dunk it on you every once in a while. Cam can't forget what got him here, what, why he's allowed to wear those, those suits and do the press conference and all that, Superman. That is because he was running over people, and it's better to sacrifice his health because I still believe he can stay healthy, uh, maybe take a year or two off his career. At least you'll get that MVP yeah, for the like, next four or five years. Not everybody's built in sports to play 15 years. Brady is. Mm-hmm. Big Ben and Cam are not 16-year guys to me. Mm-mm. They're just not. They're Michael Vick, Russell Wilson – are not built to play 17 years in this league. They're running, just not. Running quarterbacks they, don't last that they long. They don't. No. And so when, when I look at Cam Newton, he's almost the opposite of Brady. He's non-precision. He's great athletically. And he won't play more than nine years. Mm-hmm. Like he's a nine. And by, by the way, he got him to a Super Bowl. If he got him to another one, didn't even win, you'd be like, he was a good number one pick. And, and I mean, then you can argue like, like, he could be at that Hall of Fame status and play 10 years. He could, if he wins a Super Bowl and, and uh, he's going to make a ton of money. It ain't about the money. He's going to be in all the commercials like he's doing. Like, I, I just, I see what people are like, he's got to evolve. So he stays, stays in the league long. I agree with you. Just be you and ride it out for what it's worth. And you never know. See what happens. You know, I have my crazy theory. So this is my theory is that when I grew up, I watched a lot of guys, quarterbacks that would run, but they were mostly small. Steve Young was six one and a half. Flutie, Fran Tarkenton. Let's go back to the seventies. Oh. Then Vic and Russell Wilson. The reason they don't take a lot of shots, Tony, they're good sliders. They're smaller men. In the history of baseball, the top base stealers: five ten, five six, five nine, five eight. Lou Brock, Billy Hamilton. Ty Cobb was the only tall base stealer. Point being, mm-hmm. part of base stealing is the slide. Because you generally, it's a bang, bang play. Cam can't slide. Mm-mm. Tony's six, six and a half. Yeah. And so, <laughs> when, so Cam is going to get hit. I know this is loopy, but if you look at the history of baseball, all the great base stealers, 
they weren't always the best athletes. They were small, compact guys, quick, and could slide. Mm -hmm. That's why Russell Wilson never gets hit. Cam's too big to slide, physiologically speaking. If I ask you, you're 6'5", right? Yeah. You're not a slider. No. How many times did you slide before getting hit in your career? And if I tried to slide, it looked awkward. It looked, it looked awkward. horrible. It horrible. looks horrible. Yeah. So you were always, when I think of Tony Gonzalez, you put your head down. Mm -hmm. And you ran over people. Or I juke people, too. A always. little bit, yes. Tony. Put not on, often. Put on the tape, please. So my, I guess my point with Cam is, it, he's a 9- to 10-year NFL player. Mm -hmm. He's not a slider. Yeah. He's not an avoid-the-hit guy. He's going to get popped. By the and, way, Big Ben's falling apart. That's what, and, and he could have that 9-10 year brilliant career. It was, it was on its way to being brilliant. I hope they get back to letting Cam be Cam. Put the cape, put the, you know, score the touchdowns, run the ball, run over those players, do your thing, be Cam Newton, be that MVP, uh, because this guy, pocket passer, <laughs> now, you can do that, but totally you limited. Keep, 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 stay true to who you are. Hi, everybody, and thanks for watching. We want you to subscribe here here to get the latest from the show. Also be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1, First Things First with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.